Hi guys, it's Jamie here and today we're going to make a traveller's notebook for our Paris journal. A traveller's notebook has a Midori style fastening so that you can put papers in and take them out and write on them on a flat surface and then re-add them later. It's also so that if you are taking it with you traveling it's the right size to go in a purse or handbag and you can add your own bits of ephemera from the destinations that you visited ticket stubs postcards souvenirs memories they do have a traditional size which is nine inches high by 5.7 wide we're going to do ours as a wrap round wallet style so we're going to need it wider. The only thing I need to cut down on here slightly is the height. Because this is old music score, I do want to give my journal a bit of strength. So I'm going to glue two pieces together. It does not matter if my paper wrinkles when I do this because to give it even more strength, we're going to be adding napkin to the cover. Here I have some napkins that I've bought from AliExpress. You can also get napkins from eBay if you put into your eBay search napkins for decoupage. You'll find a lot of sellers selling small selections for napkins at a time rather than have to buy 20 of the same design from AliExpress. Because these are from AliExpress, they're probably only two ply. Normally my eBay napkins are three ply. We want to separate the ply on the napkin. We're going to take one ply of the napkin and cover both sides. To do that, I'm going to use Mod Podge. Quickly put a layer onto my music score and put my napkin on top. As you can see, the napkin at this point wrinkles and then we will put a layer of the Mod Podge on top. It doesn't matter if the napkin tears. That just adds to the character of what you're doing. As soon as this has dried, you can turn it over and do the other side and you can even wrap your overlapping pieces over to the other side. Now everything has been covered with napkin and is dry, I've folded it so that one side measures five inches in width and then what was left over with a small gap which I think is about an eighth of an inch, I've folded over the top bit to make a wallet shape. That just gives you a bit of space should the papers end up bulkier. The next thing I want to do is take some of this area and put some white gesso over it. There's some dyes gone on here. We can just white gesso over that. I don't know that we need a big word showing through too much. And this is more dry brushing anyway. We're not trying to fully cover anything up. Some bits will be thicker than others. We'll be doing the same on the inside. Looking at this napkin, if I'm incredibly careful about the placement, you can get away with the fact that it goes upside down because it finishes before we hit the buildings. We're using the same system that we did before when we added the inner part of the napkin, covering the whole thing with Mod Podge. This will move the white gesso around a little bit as well. Putting that into place, doing a top coat of the Mod Podge. Using a second napkin of the same design, I will do the inside. Everything has now been covered with the napkins. The use of napkins and Mod Podge on top of the music score has made it very flexible and more light material, but tough enough to hold a journal. What we're doing now is purely decorative, but I'm going to take some white Mod Podge and round the edges, I'm going to rub it in to create a faded edge. I've actually run a bit of white over the 
whole thing but mostly around the edges i have my distress ink frayed burlap i'm going to see what color that is now this already has a color on here so this may not be a true representation of what frayed burlap looks like the idea was going to be to buff this through some of these white areas now that's all done and i actually ended up going around twice i did every fold area as well as the edges and i did a general very light swoosh over the whole cover but i really concentrated on those edges i turned those inside out so that i could do those edges as well because that ages it gives it that old look ready to add a closure to do that we're going to punch a hole through with a grommet it's quite close to the edge but i think that will be okay reset it for putting in the grommet type thing through that hole we're going to create an elastic loop to hold this in place I'm going to start with some masking tape we're going to use an all-purpose glue I'm going to take my lace and that along the inside I should hold that very firmly in place that's the idea it proved to be enough lace to do the front as well as the inside so I'm really pleased about that however it does now mean that the two buttons that I have glued together don't really look right what I'm going to try to do is cover the buttons with the lace as well and trim that up I may even paint them first with a bit of white paint and then put that over nearly finished with the cover this has now had the lace added and I painted it roughly to bring up the white I've marked where the button will go I'm going to use the all-purpose glue then I may even try and sew through the button as well to make it like super strong to put holes through this button and the cover I'm going to use the awl which we normally use for stitching in or for making the holes for the signatures and stitching in the papers right, let's hope this needle fits through and isn't too thick we'll go backwards and forwards and secure that button that is now sewn on as well as glued on so i feel fairly confident that should be pretty secure and then the way this will do up is quite simply hook that elastic over that button and that is our cover made in the next video we will be selecting the papers that go into this and creating a set of papers that are going to be interesting for a traveler's notebook scrapbook glue book it depends how you want to use it I will see you very, very soon. Bye.